In terms of Mozilla, um, I, I, I'm a big Firefox user, for example, and uh, I like I like the products, and I kind of like the fact that there's a foundation as opposed to a a corporation. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. From from the from the founding of, of, of Mozilla, what was the um, the idea or the ambition uh, among, among the people who started it? We had a couple ambitions. The most practical was to make a shared resource. So for us, Firefox is a shared asset. It's like a public asset. And so we feel that Firefox is owned by the public, owned by the people who create it, owned by the people who love it. And so the foundation is a nonprofit because we're making something shared and because we're trying to build certain traits into the internet. And we, you know, we recognize that the commercial organizations and the drive and the capital and the private wealth generation and the return to shareholders is important. But we also feel like the internet is such a foundation of life that we need another layer to it. And so we build Mozilla to be all about an individual person having control and all about civic value, social value, completely open. And of course we, we do generate revenue. We want to sustain ourselves and pay salaries enough to make the product. But we're organized so that we don't have to generate that increasing return on investment right, that, that a commercial organization does. And that frees us to make decisions really differently. So those are the kinds of things that we were thinking about when we started the foundation, and we're still thinking about today. But that kind of answers the next question, which I was kind of going to ask. How does a foundation start up with the uh, you know, with ideals uh, in <laughs> with technology? Because yeah. technology yeah. is... Uh, it's controlled, it's going to be edgy, it's a car yeah. ahead. But how do, you, how do you keep ideals pace with uh, breakthrough technologies? Yeah. Well, first of all, our ideals are powerful. And it turns out that for a lot of people, once they've sort of touched the network or the web and they understand what's possible, it's extremely motivating. So, for example, hiring is easier than you might think in the Valley, where everybody else gets stock options, you know, and a chance to get really, really rich. Um, but for us, so first of all, the motivation is really strong. People understand it. And then the other piece is I think the technology, living in the market is really important because that tests our ideas. So we know that, well, our ideas are important, but we know that if we produce a poor quality product, we won't be effective. And so I think there's a discipline in technology that forces, you know, you test your ideas by the flames of fire, that idea. And for us, that's what the market is. So people like Firefox, they like the idea we're a nonprofit, they like the idea that, you know, we care about things other than our own personal wealth, but they still want to have a great product. And so that combination turns out to be really quite effective. The browser market, I mean, I remember the days of the uh, AOL browsers and the, the Windows, and, or sorry, Microsoft uh, muscling into the market and then uh, a lot of that going on. And I had a conversation with someone from Chrome recently, uh, from Google's Chrome side of things, and. Uh, one of the things they said that one of the reasons why they moved in to the market was they felt that they at least they could help rustle things up by throwing in their innovation into the market and stuff like that. Do you think the browser market was stagnating for a while in terms of innovation that uh, maybe uh, more needed to be done in terms of what people could do with their browsers and now we're seeing um, people trying to come out with browsers that are potentially desktops uh, you know and of course then now we are also in the mobile world. Right. Let's see. Well, certainly there was stagnation in the browser space before Firefox. That was very clear, right? Microsoft had even, I think, disassembled, is that a word? Disbanded the team working on IE. So there was absolutely stagnation there. So that was part of the reason we built Firefox. I don't know if I would say we were stagnating. Maybe others would, I'm not sure. But, but certainly competition is good. It's, it, part of what we set out to do was create competition. And so it's never easy when you're in a competitive space. And so it's not easy for us having all of Google's focus and resources, but I think it's good. And I think they push us and we push them. And so I think the product, both of our products are much better now than they would be you know, without the other. Uh, as to the future, it's not stagnant now. You know, there's a lot of attention on browsers right now. Um, but I do think we'll see more. But, but a little bit different than we expect. We'll see two things. One is browsers as we know them. And, and that's an application, you know, as a back button and a forward button and a box for URLs. Um, and those will continue to get better because we still use the web a lot, actually. More people use the web every day. But the technology that underlies that is extremely powerful. 
you and I as human beings don't interact with it directly, we don't see it. But the technology that makes browsers work is really at the heart of network access. And so that technology will continue. So you see that in the Chrome OS, for example. You see some of that technology in Firefox OS for mobile devices. And that technology, our goal at Mozilla is to take that technology and meld it with the app world so we can have some of the flexibility and fun of apps with the freedoms and openness of the web. So I think the development of that technology will continue at breakneck speed for quite a while. Mitchell, thank you very much. That was great. Excellent. You.